right it it gives it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all uh, to today's session and uh, this is manoj kumar the director of uh, program management at unicaxa and uh, you know i always take pride in uh, telling this students of this uh, you know of this era they are digitally sound and skillfully you know enabled with a lot of options they have uh, they have been uh, you know using a lot of platforms for uh, which have been automated and uh, which have brought them to new heights of a simplified a uh, lifestyle back then uh, there were not uh, you know uh, too much uh, uh, products like this and there were no platforms like this uh, which we are currently using uh, and you know systems were always uh, dependent on a human level to a great extent be it machines be it devices be it uh, you know the technologies which we are using everything was uh, restricted by a level of dependence on uh, human beings and this has been changing uh, to a great extent uh, in the recent past and nowadays it is even more so uh, you know even more in the sense uh, you know you wouldn't have imagined you know or we wouldn't have imagined you know this level of uh, advancements in this uh, in 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 various industries in various domains let us say you know uh, one good example uh, which i could give you uh, uh, give you is uh, the medical industry back then uh, you know we were facing uh, uh, we were we were supposed to take reports and we go to a doctor we go to a medical expert and you know we would wait uh, in the lines uh, for getting an appointment and nowadays we are getting the service the consultation of a doctor with just a click am i right or not and you know we start uh, uh, the 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 moment we wake up we look out for our mobile phones we look out for notifications advertisements uh, what we like what we do not like based on you know your preferences everything is displayed to you on your mobile phone itself your life is getting so much simplified than it was in the last decade there is one uh, you know interesting factor uh, you know in the last decade when we were studying we didn't have this uh, you know android mobile phones and it was it was just you know uh, a small phone with the num uh, number pad on it where you know we were only uh, supposed to make calls and we were paying for internet uh, you wouldn't believe us uh, you know believe me we were just using 1 gb of data the whole month and that was very uh, very expensive back then you know when we started using the smartphones and that is when everything gets uh, you know everything got associated with data around us we we, we would have you know done a few things about uh, you know uh, on the internet we would have searched for something on google and uh, you know the same would be displayed as advertisements on in, in inside our uh, email inboxes but now we are being manipulated by that data right so you know we uh, the at, at one point of time these uh, you know e-commerce websites or uh, these uh, social media tempt us to such an extent that we end up paying for things we literally do not require but just because it is cheap just because it is easily available we have bought that and that is not just with the lives of everyone it has attained a new uh, a new level of transformation in the industry as well we uh, we have you know majority of us have studied this uh, engineering none of us would know why we did uh, that graduation you know be computer science and engineering or uh, you know whatever 
uh, department you have studied, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, everything is there. When we were studying uh, in, in, in an engineering college, none of us would not have known why we are studying, uh, studying that particular domain. Somehow we struggle, you know, we, uh, we uh, uh, study overnight. Uh, no one has, you know, no one still follows the habit of uh, studying on a daily basis. And just before the day of the examination, we would study and we would go into the examination. We would uh, scribble whatever we know and we just pray that, you know, the result should be satisfactory and we should get pass. And I've, I've known stories, I've traveled with a lot of friends, uh, you know, who cleared uh, some 10, 12 arrears uh, backlogs in their final semester and they, uh, they, they are in a very good job right now. Back then, every engineer had their own responsibility. A civil engineer would be building something. A mechanical engineer would be, a mechanical engineer would be working in, a, in an automobile industry. A mechatronics engineer would be uh, working in some embedded uh, related uh, industry uh, where you know, they build some uh, tools to monitor uh, some processes. You know, they build industrial arms that uh, automates the process that reduces the human intervention and so on. A computer science engineer obviously would be working, uh, building software products and uh, simplifying the lives of people uh, with mobile and web applications. We are currently in an, in an era, uh, in, an, in a decade where everything is very closely associated. When I say closely, it is much more than you expect. Back then, uh, you know, 10, 15 years back, we did not have, uh, you know, OYO or Airbnb or uh, Flipkart and Amazon were not this popular and accessibility was very much limited. But now this industry has gone to a whole new level and Unicaxa is really proud to bring you this series on industry 4.0 and how machine learning and data science helps you attain a, uh, attain this uh, skill to place you in the relevant industry. Apart from this, what Unicaxa offers you is it enables you, it prepares you with the right set of skills and you will be able to get your dream job. The industry is expecting so much and the curriculum which we are studying is holding us back. I understand that, you know, they lay the foundations of, you know, the core engineering concepts which are required, I understand. But, you know, the industry has evolved so much that the core knowledge on the engineering concepts are still uh, very minimal when you get exposed to the real industry. In this path, in this journey of transforming you to become the rightful graduate of industry 4.0, we have come up with a lot of courses and you know these set of courses will be taking you to the right uh, you know, exposure, right uh, level of skills. And in that journey, this guru class is one part of it. So we have been organizing this guru classes on every Saturday where we provide you the knowledge about the industry, the demand, and what would be the right uh, step for you to take in order to get, a, get your dream job and your dream package. And in today's session, we are going to discuss a lot about industry 4.0. We know industry. Right, an industry is like you know a mill. Uh, you know, it is like uh, you know an automobile uh, company where they build some machines and you know they deliver it. But that is not all. Every industry, every company out there tries to automate the processes internally. And how do they do it? So if it is a mechanical uh, related industry, they automate processes with machines, right? Uh, you know, th there is a person, there are some 10 persons doing a particular job and a machine will replace the work of these 10 people. 
right it gives you better quality it gives you the products much faster than how uh, this 10 people are uh, giving you and it is much safer right whenever human beings are involved there are chances of errors and there are chances of injuries also but when a machine is concerned as far as the machine is concerned all you have to do is proper maintenance and with that you can assure maximum quality but even if you deploy a machine to take care of some activities there is still a lot of you know background uh, research and uh, you know innovative uh, technologies deployed in the back end that makes that machine work according to the requirements and that is where every engineering student would be required to incorporate their knowledge and build something that makes industry 4.0 a feasible solution for everything we are in this industry for so long and we we are, we, are, we still do not know about it and this guru class is going to take you through all these concepts and you know we are going to discuss a lot of things uh, and we are going to relate how you unknowingly or unintentionally you become a, a core element behind this industry 4.0 around which everything works and we will be discussing what are cyber physical systems we know physical systems you know a phone is a physical system you know a, tele a television is a physical system whatever we are doing uh, you know is associated you know whatever we we can hold in our hands they are termed as physical systems but how do we make it cyber physical so we take a photograph that photograph immediately gets stored on your google photos if it is an android phone obviously and you know if it if it is an uh, apple uh, apple device it gets stored on icloud if i'm not wrong i'm you know i've not used that so far so you know th this is this is how your data becomes a potential business component for this industry 4.0 and that is not all back then uh, you know when flipkart and amazon was uh, you know they were introduced uh, to india no one believed it but now isn't the scenario completely upside down if you want something instead of searching it on google you immediately search on Amazon and Flipkart. And back then, it took us almost, you know, a month. I remember getting something uh, which I ordered on Amazon. It took me a month to get that product in hand. But nowadays, I'm getting it on the same day. And guess what? It has simplified my job. I do not have to take my car. I, have to, I do not have to go out. I do not have to search something and you know may probably negotiate with with the vendor and i did not have i, I did not have to do anything of it which i usually did this is how a cyber physical system has simplified the lives and it has extensively done it we are also going to walk through what the benefits of industry 4.0 is well, benefits are and the internet of things we are going to uh, discuss a few things how uh, the entire architecture is being implemented while discussing all these things we couldn't eliminate the fact that ai is the core component behind all of this right when we are talking about artificial intelligence we have come across a lot of things right you know applying filters on uh, a, a web i mean a mobile camera and uh, you know seeing uh, beautifying ourselves uh, virtually and you know these are some of the users real uh, real use uh, real use case scenarios which we are applying in real time but it has attained to a point where we started believing that AI is smarter than human, and of course it is. Right now we are we, we are living in an era where uh, self-driving cars has become a common uh, you know element in the uh, on, on roads nowadays. 
right and china they have gone one step ahead they are building ai pets you know as such uh, the real life pets are no more uh, you know useful right reliability on such machines have increased to a whole new level and we are going to discuss how this evolved you know from the 1800s or you know from the 1700s and to to what level we are currently uh, you know uh, currently in and i hope this session i could you know i, I planned uh, this with a number of activities and i hope uh, this will be uh, interactive and whenever you have some doubts feel free to uh, connect with me this is how we started so we started uh, you know with uh, the industrial revolutions where you know we introduced this uh, steam and water power where did we use steam and where did we use water power or you know uh, electricity was the major uh, factor of any industry which is currently working right and you want to build something which is beyond the capability of human beings and you know where, where you require so much power in order to make something functional and that is where or that is when we started this first mechanical uh, you know uh, we, we started using this first mechanical loom you know what a loom is right uh, you know uh, something associated with the uh, textile industry and it is it is driven by uh, driven by some energy which is beyond the capability of uh, you know one or uh, one or more human beings let's say you require uh, you know 1000 uh, uh, members to build something and we are living in an era where 3d homes are you know uh, uh, homes are built with uh, 3d printers right or not you just have to you know uh, uh, provide this uh, construction materials to this uh, robotic arm which and you have to pro provide this plan to it and it constructs the whole uh, house for you right how many people are getting replaced by one machine and how quickly can you get that that is when we started this first industrial revolution where you know we required a loom that loom has to be you know uh, made into a mechanical one and it was powered by not human beings but it was powered by water and steam water is you know uh, is heated to one level uh, one one extent where it converts into steam steam is fed into you know uh, the pipes which pushes the piston the piston you know moves and it it starts uh, circling which push, you know which is connected with bells and it started doing the process right but that is not enough because ever since you know we evolved from you know monkey or whatever the big bang theory is you know wherever we we started evolving we always wanted to improvise right or not and this improvisation has led to the second industrial revolution where we were producing something but we wanted more you know to uh, to meet the demands there is always this supply and demand uh, you know analysis where you produce something uh, to you know you produce 100 1000 people will want it you produce 1000 10000 people will want it right and in order to uh, you know move the industries to the next level we brought in a concept of mass production we wanted to produce something and we wanted that to be produced in mass and that is when the second revolution came in in 1870s that is when we started using electrical energy instead of steam and uh, obviously water there were always hazards with you know every uh, improvisation we brought 
right you know uh, you have to store lot lots and lots of water and imagine the heat required to convert water into a steam and the steam will be processed through pipes back then we didn't have the technology to monitor this without human intervention and that led to obviously some uh, occupational hazards that is when we started replacing water and steam energy steam power with electrical energy right it was more easier it was you know much easier to handle uh, electrical energy because all it takes just you know some copper wires and with with just you know a click of a switch you were able to operate the entire machinery unlike you know the dependency on motors and rotors that that handle the steam power the steam will push the uh, piston and so on right it is not like that and then came uh, you know the first conveyor belt you would have seen this carousels in the airports right uh, you know we 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 give this uh, uh, our, our, you know luggages to the uh, in the airport and you know they will use a conveyor belt to transport that to the flight uh, to the plane which we are traveling and after uh, you know getting down from the plane again you know we wait at one point uh, you know all the luggages will be uh, on the carousel and we take ours the applications of this conveyor belt is so huge that at one point of time it tra started transporting people even within the uh, you know airport itself right that is when you know that is a, a different form of uh, the escalators are a different form of conveyor belts which you know which uh, moved people from one point one point to another right so this is how the industrial revolution you know started uh, evolving from you know 1784 then you know 1870s then in the in the uh, year of 1969 we con we uh, conceptualized the uh, you know the benefits of uh, it and electronics believe me data science is a domain which is into the, into existence from 1962 we have been reliant on data from 1962 and the level of applications which used data were limited back then, but only in 2020, data science has become a buzzing keyword in this industry. And a lot of people are running behind this data science. No, I want data science. I want to study data science. I wanted to study data science. But, you know, are you really eligible to study data science? That, that is the important question. Here. Why I'm asking that question is because we have to be fundamentally strong in the core technologies to make you a better data scientist or a machine learning expert. Right. Now, the first programmable, programmable uh, logic controller, what is a PLC? PLC you might have heard of and you might have uh, studied in your electronics uh, laboratories. A PLC is a basic component where you can write a few instructions, you can store that instructions and the board will be executing these uh, uh, instructions for you, right? Like getting the, uh, you know, one, one uh, basic uh, example is, you know, getting two inputs, adding them or multiplying them, uh, performing some arithmetic operations on those inputs and, you know, producing the output on a LED screen. And believe me, that was the foundation of modern uh, missionary. And in the fourth industrial revolution, which uh, started in 2013, yes, believe me, it is in 2013, we have got into a new level of complexity where everything was automated. Everything. You take a photograph, Google doesn't ask you, Android doesn't ask you, it just stores on the Google Cloud. Right. And you want to use uh, Office on mobile phone, you want to use, yes, use it. On, on, a, on a laptop or a desktop, you want to use it? Yes, use it. Your data is everywhere. Right? Now, systems have become so advanced that it, it is capable of recognizing whether you are happy or sad. Even my wife doesn't know it. 
when i when i'm uh, you know happy when i'm sad right but machines are so intelligent it tells me you know you look uh, you look sad why don't you go for a walk so this is the level of complexity you know we have included into the fourth industrial revolution and it is not just one device it has not just two devices whichever has you know a plc unit in it whichever component whichever device is built with some electronic component it is capable of understanding uh, yourself much better than your friends and family because it has been powered by lots and lots of algorithms in the back end and that is where we are extensively using machine learning iot and you know deep learning all these things right and coming to pillars what do you mean by pillars we have studied uh this has become you know an inevitable two mark question uh, or you know uh, some you know two mark or five mark question in your uh, university exam name the pillars of object oriented programming what are those classes and objects revolve around four important concepts inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation but believe me object oriented programming is dead it is it is no more we have stopped using we have stopped building applications around this object oriented programming concepts we are far more advanced than uh, the object oriented programming concepts why because oops you know data structures and algorithms can handle data only to some extent and the data which we are consuming the data which we are generating on a daily basis the moment you know you you are you, you all are you know we all are participating in this event right now right and this uh, you know zoom or uh, this platform which we are currently using for real time communication is capable of handling your interest levels because for registering in this guru class you would have searched something related to industry 4.0 or machine uh, machine learning or data science and you would have registered for this event and believe me you are getting you you will be getting a lot more recommendations about these uh, similar programs because your system knows what you are really interested in and when it comes to industry 4.0 we have nine pillars i did not bring in one pillar uh, intentionally because you know we have stopped using or we have limited the usage of rfid uh, technology uh, which is you know replaced by a lot more advanced technologies to start off with internet of things is the you know the pillar behind uh, industry 4.0 we know internet we know things but what is internet of things it is a combination of uh how to say uh, automated and sophisticated components which are inevitable in our daily life one good example is your mobile phone smartphone obviously right and everything inside your home okay let let me not you know point it out to you everything inside our home is smart except us do you agree television has become smart fan uh, you know uh, the, the fans which we are using uh, air conditioners which we are using refrigerators which we are using laptops which we are using everything has become smart except us that was a joke so it depends how you take it so the thing is all these components produce this environment and that environment is none other than the internet of things it tells you what to do next you go into a you know a smart uh, television 
it tells you which movie to watch which series to watch and how to waste your 2 to 3 hours of time even without knowing right cloud computing like i uh, you know mentioned i search for something flipkart knows it amazon knows it and you know whatever other uh, e-commerce applications are there they also know it and they tell me what to buy and the moment you search for something on google it tells you uh, where it is available and how soon it can be shipped to your home address right that is what we call it as cloud computing everything is in cloud everything believe me whatever you did in uh, uh, the, you know whatever the photo you have taken whichever photo you have taken whichever places you have visited uh, when you first bought your smartphone everything is on the cloud and you know google is uh, re really uh, you know caring enough uh, to you know assertive enough to give you uh, uh, some memories to recall your memories you know i, I was there in 2015 i was here in 2013 uh, with my friends, what I was doing, where I was, uh, you know, taking pictures. And, you know, this is how it recalls, right? And mobile technologies. What are mobile technologies? You, you have sensors. If you are going to get a heart attack, your, your smartwatch will tell you. If you are having a, uh, you know, hike in your BP, uh, blood pressure, you know, if you are walking some 10,000 steps in a day, it is going to measure how much you have taken in and how much you have spent in terms of calories, right? There is an uh, internal, uh, you know, uh, interesting application called uh, JAR, right? I do not know how many of you tested it, but I tested it uh, for one of my, uh, you know, research purpose. It monitors how much I'm spending in a particular day, on a particular day. So let's say I've spent some, you know, 94 rupees uh, for diesel, okay? And the remaining 6 rupees, it will recommend me to sp sp spend it on gold. Come on, I couldn't even afford one liter of diesel. How can I afford gold? And how much gold are you giving me for six rupees? Right or not? So these are the technologies which decides what you are going to do and how you are going to do it. And a lot of machine to machine interactions, this is more you know uh, specific to industry 4.0. So let's say, you know, uh, what happens uh, you know, let's say you are connected on a wireless printer. You take a photograph, you, you know, you copy. None of us have this habit of uh, writing notes in the classrooms anymore. So whatever the uh, teacher or the trainer writes on the board, uh, one student will, you know, take with the highest uh, megapixel camera, with the highest megapixel camera. Uh, he will, you know, take a photograph and he will circulate it on the WhatsApp group. How simple it is, right? That is machine to machine interaction. We circulate notes like that i have spent hours and hours and i've even got punishments for not writing notes in my classroom when i studied my uh, graduation how years have evolved how you know years have changed how, how technology has made us lazy and 3d printing that is also called as additive manu manufacturing where you know everything is associated with 3d printing now you want to build a whistle you can build you want to build a home it can build you a home also and advanced robotics. Uh, if you get a chance, you know, uh, see some automated uh, BMW uh, workshops or you know BMW warehouses uh, in, in in foreign countries, where they'll tell you, you know, uh, how a car is built uh, with minimal intervention, without uh, human intervention at all. And you know, they will uh, the machinery itself will sense how sophisticated your outcome is, how complete and how how much quality can be assured for your product, which is built by complete you know a, a robotic arm, right? And apart from all of this, you have big data and analytics, and this big data is taken from each and every point which I have mentioned as the pillar right now you know, before this. And what do you mean by cognitive computing? We, we are, as I told you, we are living in an era where self-driving cars are more, uh, you know, more common on roads. Not in India, obviously, because we do not know when a cow is going to cross the road. So this, you know, this self-driving cars have made it so 
lively and it is more faster then a human can interpret the surrounding uh, features and can tell us what to do. How interesting is it, right? And uh, in, in the last Olympics, which happened uh, in, in, the, in the midst of uh, the corona, the, the pandemic, self-driving cars were used to, uh, you know, to, uh, as a transportation medium for the athletes to reach the stadium from their hotels. Interesting, right? So this is what we call it as cognitive computing. And all these work together for giving us this environment in which we are living. Interesting, right? And this is the most important part. What or how this industrial revolution happened or is happening? There are, you know, three types. Uh, of you know this uh, industrial revolution, one which detects this human and machine interactions. The other is how to differentiate between the reality and virtual uh, you know components, and how to associate or you know how to make the humans and things to communicate with each other. A few good examples to state are. You know this technology how this technology has made a society intelligent in the last decade let's say uh, you know uh, I'm, I'm having some trouble uh, with respect to health i'm uh, repeatedly coughing i'll go to a doctor the doctor will ask me to take some series of tests I'll go to, I'll take the report and I'll go to the doctor. That doctor will see all these reports. You would have seen uh, these uh, scenes in the movies. The doctor will see this report and that would most probably be the topic which he, uh, you know, bunked in the, in the, in his uh, college, uh, college days. And he would recommend this to a specialist where the specialist will go, uh, you know, uh, will see the report. We will bring the report to the specialist. The specialist will see the report and he will tell us, you have six months more to leave. And that would not be true. Why? Because that is how, you know, we are interpreted. The data is interpreted. I'm not telling that, you know, no, uh, the, the specialist are not uh, intelligent or anything. There are chances of human errors. And it always requires an expert opinion for everything which has to be validated. But nowadays, the machine which scans us, that machine itself will tell us, uh, you know, what is my problem? Right or not? That is how the human and machine are going to be working together in an intelligent society. The extreme machines are powered by algorithms to detect the cancer levels, to tell us whether we have cancer or not, or if we have cancer, which level, which stage of cancer we are having. Right. And next comes AR and VR, virtual reality and augmented reality. What, what are those? Is, is it just this, uh, you know, we are a uh, device which we wear and, you know, we play games? No, it is not. It's much more than that. That stimulates your life. It tells you how to visualize something and be happy about it. Right or not? We were having this, uh, you know, science and uh, the other uh, the exhibitions, science fairs and exhibitions where we get the experience of, uh, you know, experience of uh, this roller coasters. But nowadays, they make us wear some, you know, VR cam and they simulate this whole environment. And we are experiencing the same feeling as much as we would do on a roller coaster. Am I right? Theaters are one good example of this VR, virtual reality. All of us would know 3D theaters, right? 
how many of you know that there are 70 theaters and we have one or two in india if i'm not wrong one in hyderabad if, if i'm not wrong right so this is how we have evolved we have accelerated to uh, you know to our uh, to a domain which is completed by virtual and augmented reality we introduce the human experience we apply the cognitive uh, you know ability of a machine and guess what we have got a whole new product the next is human things how human beings and things can work together you you walk on a road okay uh, let, let me just uh, you know give you a better example i want to go to a place where, where which i have not visited so far right and i do not know the uh, uh, route i do not know how to reach there before the smartphones were into existence we would stop at least uh, you know some 20 30 times to ask someone how to reach to a particular place right but nowadays google maps it tells us which road is the fastest which road is congested and which is the shortest route there how much toll you have to pay and guess what everything is there on google map on the way if you want to have uh, you know have food it tells you which is the best restaurant if you want to have a coffee it tells you where you can you know find a coffee day so this is how the connection between human and things get uh, you know more elaborated and uh, you know this is how the interactions get more meaningful interesting right so on this note i would like to uh, you know share a poll with you all where you know i'll uh, just to ensure that all of us are on the same page just give me one second Uh, Manjit, can you share the poll if you have access? So it's over. Can you share the poll? There will be so a, right. Uh, there will be a poll named uh, poll one. Can you share that, please, with the participants? Okay, sir. Is it shared, Manjit? Yes, I already saw. Perfect, perfect. Let me know once uh, all of them are completed. Okay, sir.
and with that note uh, i would like to invite vijay for a uh, session about uh, the products which we are offering um hey guys so uh, pritesh could you please take this up yes vijay i I'll, i'll take this up <clears throat> so am i am i visible yes yes pratish yeah uh, very good evening to everyone present here uh, let me introduce myself uh, i am pratish mehta and i am the student counselor at uni gaksha first of all congratulations everyone uh, who's part of this webinar i i do understand that you could be doing a lot on a saturday evening but you chose to attend this webinar this really shows that you know uh, you are really passionate about learning new skills or about learning new technologies right yeah so i i might sound like an unskippable youtube ad today but i will ensure that each second of your time is made worthwhile yeah everyone am i audible can i get some responses Yes, Pratish. Yes, Pratish. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'll just start right away. Right. Uh, I'll just want you guys to answer a simple question. Can you just imagine what are your chances to actually get into top tier one product based companies? If I ask you all the folks that are present here, what do you think are your chances to get into tier one product based companies? You can write it in the chat box. okay mm -hmm. okay perfect so i'll 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 just lay down certain facts for you right so out of 100 folks who apply right only 12% people get to you know just sit for the interview that's the first round of it and not even talking about getting a job that's 12% who are only uh, getting to the first part of it which is getting uh, to give an interview for these top tier one product based companies like apple amazon microsoft all these companies right so i'm sure you would also agree that you know gone are the days when these companies were hiring people and training them to actually the skills that is required by the industry right so right now these companies are actually looking for ready talent right and the, the correct set of skill sets correct okay right so uh, you know i'll just lay down again one more fact for you uh, there are close to 15000 full stack developer opportunities that are available every month in across you know all the metro cities right out of which 5000 jobs are entry level jobs now these 5000 jobs start from a salary salary bracket of uh, 5 lakh rupees per annum going upwards till 30 lakh rupees i'm sure hearing that salary everyone is very excited right i i i do understand that you will be having certain set of questions to ask right but before you go ahead and drop in some questions like you know uh, which are the companies that are offering this salaries am i eligible or a couple of more questions right i'll just share certain insights with you right well any person irrespective of the background age or whatever domain he is into right if you are actually you know a graduate or if you are still in college right a tech fit program right our tech fit courses that are currently focused on most in demand skills of the tech industry today is you know been offered to you right now this tech fit programs we we have divided into three parts right one is a java full stack development program the other is web full stack development program uh, which is based on mon 
and again the third program is data science with python okay clear now i'm sure you would probably ask why unique aksha and you know what is it that you are offering uh, so different right why someone should join unique aksha so you know there are a lot of points that i can bring on to the table right but one very important point that i would like to highlight is you know uh, the tech mentors right now if i ask you a question right if you want to learn batting all right who better than you know sachin or kohli to teach you how to bat right and taking that same inspiration what we've done is that we have industry mentors right uh, we have folks from the industry who has more than 10 years of experience and these are the folks who can help you break down even complex of the things uh, for your understanding right so that's one of our key pointers in called key usp and apart from that there is a lot of things that we have to offer right and uh, if you have any questions or do you, if you wish to know more about the programs what i'll do is i'll share a link in the chat box right uh, you can fill that and then we'll get in touch with you clear hello yes pratish you can share the link in the chat box <clears throat> yeah i'll i'll share the link yeah that's about it thank you so much thanks thanks pratish for that and yes so coming back we spoke about how this industrial revolution worked and you know how much it has you know reached uh, the new level with the help of these sophisticated technologies you know one is customer support management with the with the uh, help of uh, sensors with the help of ivrs with the help of chatbots right so these have got into a whole new level uh, one good example is uh, you will not be talking to a real person to share your grievances on ola uber um uh, and uh, swiggy and zomato as well so if you are facing a you know if you are facing a difficulty if you are having some grievances to share the very first level of resolution will be taken by a bot how interesting is that right and the same uh you know when it comes to quality assurance in industry 4.0 these set of uh decisions are made by the sensors by the chatbots by applications which are programmed to ensure and assure quality right and cyber security we have been you know uh, worried about our data getting shared in multiple places knowingly and unknowingly it has already done it has already shared let us not come to that for now but the thing is there are still a lot of options for you to protect yourself from this uh, you know uh, wide exposure wide internet uh, you know exposure so wherever there are uh, you know uh, some policies in place please 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 read those carefully before you are uh, clicking next we we always have this habit right we download something uh we don't worry about uh, any of the terms and conditions what we simply do is next 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 and finally install and finish we would only care about the install and finish whatever it is saying in the uh, in, in between we do not care about it so that is you know one um, 
important segment which you are, we should be uh, caring about. You should be reading all those policies. You should know when and where your information is stored and how your information, personal information specifically, is going to be accessed by the uh, by this uh, industry, by these companies. And that is why you you would you would see whenever you are uh, opening a new website, it will ask you. It will you know it, it there will be a disclaimer in the in the middle or in the, in the in the bottom, or it will pop up right away stating that this website records your personal information for business purposes. But you can agree to it, you can disagree to it, and you can also select which data of yours can be stored by the company so please please don't take it uh, lightly because your information is very important especially when it comes to uh, you know uh, teenagers and uh, you know uh, the, the ones who have just uh, got into uh, this industry because this is where you know we typically lose everything and you know all of us are technically skilled all of us know about you know uh, what are the prospects what are the you know disadvantages of sharing our personal information but we are least bothered about it so let us change that habit and you know i know this is not a philosophy class but let me, let me come back to the topic and next is robotics so what is what do you mean by robotics is it just an industrial arm no it is not whether it is just a replacement for human being no it is not again some things which may not be done by a human being, like you know, uh, traveling to Mars and identifying what 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 sort of afterlife is there or extraterrestrial life is there. Can we do that? Yes, we can do that, but we 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 need not do it, right? So that is where robotics have gone to the next new level, and it wherever we cannot explore something, robotics is being implied. It is not just to replace human, but to, uh, you know, but to uh, learn a lot of things apart from the capability, you know, beyond the capability of what we uh, what we can. Cloud computing is obviously there, and you know, a lot of businesses have turned their business, uh, you know, turned their operations and everything to cloud uh, cloud computing solutions. And guess what? Robotic process automation is a, an interesting domain again. It is an evolving domain and it has reached to new heights again. Like you do not have to open your email on a daily basis. Uh, you know, checking whether uh, your email is a spam email or not. That is once that is the function of a, one simple algorithm. But imagine the same operation being done on a daily basis and for the whole organization right and there will be a team of hrs in every organization to calculate the salaries to you know to uh, address the grievances of uh, uh, the people inside and robotic process automation simplifies or uh, takes care of all these tedious processes uh, you know related to an uh, to an operational perspective and that is where these advanced systems have grown so much and that is a component of industry 4.0 okay now that i've told you that these systems are there and you know it is going to help us a lot uh, by improving the uh, uh, association simplifying the processes all these things i've told you now how does a machine know how to react in a particular scenario. Like we were speaking about cyber physical systems, we know there is a, a physical system, that there is a device. Now, how do we make a physical device intelligent enough to resolve a particular situation or a scenario and come up with a beautiful outcome, an intelligent and innovative outcome? That is where the cyber physical systems get trained with the help of machine learning and data science, big data, analytics, whatever you call it. So we have three different types of clusters that enables this industry 4.0 to learn and act accordingly in future, uh, future cases. 
So the very first cluster which I wanted to discuss about is the physical cluster, where it establishes a connection uh, between you and the machine directly, right? So there are systems. This system will interact with you directly and it will manage the relationship. This is one good example, which I told you uh, that, you know, the chatbots will resolve your problem on Ola, Uber and uh, Swiggy and Zomatos, right? So this is, you know, a physical cluster uh, where it directly interacts with you. It understands what you like, what you do not like. And, you know, what would you prefer? When you, when, when, when you go to, uh, you know, Swiggy, it automatically tells you what to eat, right? It gives you some recommendations and how these recommendations are brought in. I have, I have a very, you know, uh, long history of ordering something. Let's say biryani is my favorite. You know, I have this history of ordering biryani and the very first thing it will give it to me is the biryani. Right. When a new restaurant comes in or uh, restaurants with highest ratings for its biryani will be recommended to me. Right. So this is how these physical systems directly interact with us, understands the patterns. Pattern recognition is a very important concept in industry 4.0. Why? Because the, the pattern recognition algorithms will uh, you know, will, will be responsible for making decisions. It is not about a decision, you know, whether you, uh, whether it is going to be a yes or no. Such systems are, you know, uh, some uh, old, old, very, you know, long history. It is not going to tell you whether it is a yes or no, but it is going to recommend something much better. And that, that is obviously something you like. I have seen a lot of recommendation engines, uh, you know, in terms of web applications, in terms of mobile applications, in terms of, you know, uh, the other uh, uh, physical systems which I have used so far. And they have become so, uh, so powerful that it is very hard to neglect those recommendations. And that is where this DARPA, DARPA is, uh, you know, uh, the uh, government organization for building military grade uh, weapons and you know google tesla toyota 3d printing advanced robotics all these uh, all these uh, you know technologies are automated with the help of this physical clusters where they interact with the human being they understand what i want what you want and you know they won't be uh, one mission will not be giving the same recommendation to you and me Despite having the similar characteristics, despite being having the same dislikes and uh, uh, desires, it won't be giving us the same recommendation. It knows what I would feel in a particular scenario and it knows uh, how you would feel in a particular scenario, right? So that is how intelligent these machines have become. And the next is a biological cluster. This is more related to, uh, you know, um, you have seen the surface computing, right? Uh, how many of you have watched this Iron Man, right? The uh, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. will be, uh, uh, you know, building applications uh, with Jarvis, right? We're building, uh, designing uh, how this Iron Man would look like with the help of Jarvis, you know? He would just uh, swipe his hand from somewhere in the air and, you know, something will come in, something will go out, there will be a dustbin, he will, you know, capture some uh, in, in the air and, you know, put it in the dustbin and that will get deleted automatically, right? So this, these, are, you know, this is what we call it as brain-computer interface. And you would have seen a lot of, uh, you know, VR... Uh, uh, devices which are capable of managing your drones. You do not uh, require a remote control for managing a drone, but uh, you know you can simply make a drone uh, controlled by your brain directly. You want to fly, you know, it, if, if you are if you are thinking about uh, if you want to make that drone fly, it will make it fly, right? So these are the benefits of biological clusters, and these are more you know. Uh, uh, responsible for building weapons. Currently, it is extensively used in building weapons and it is also used in CRISPR, uh, which automates uh, 
the you know designing of uh, animals and humans embryos uh, you might have come across uh, you know where the uh, scientists have built some bacteria that decompose uh, plastic in the in the oceans right so these are you know the uh, products of biological clusters and this is again one uh, very uh, vast industry which is benefited by artificial intelligence machine learning and what not industry 4.0 right and next comes the digital clusters see these are some of the examples where you have uh, in, we have impl successfully implemented digital clusters uh, vehicle bomb detection and you know it is it, it may it, it may simply seem that it was it is a sensor that looks for bomb but it is not so nowadays you know uh, bombs are much uh, different uh, uh, then, then we see uh, see in the movies. It it cannot be detected by a metal detector. Obviously, it is it is you know uh, built with plastics now. But just by looking at something, you know, it is it is uh, built with a lot of patterns. This is where pattern recognition comes to uh, the rescue. So you know you have this uh, you know. Uh, Phys uh, uh, capturing image capturing devices that understands how a, a bomb is supposed to be built. And it has seen lots and lots of pictures of bombs, different variations of bombs. And just by looking at it, it will be detecting whether a vehicle is, uh, you know, uh, built with a bomb or not. Right, and cams for preventing crime. We, we have been, uh, you know, deploying uh, CCTV cameras for preventing crime, but that is not the actual purpose of preventing crime. But cameras are really brilliant enough uh, to tell whether a, you know a particular situation is has the possibility of a crime happening or not, right? So uh, they have built some uh, you know uh, innovative uh, uh, cameras where you know when someone takes a gun from their pocket, it it, it it alarms the near uh, nearby officials you know it alarms the uh, hospitals then you know it it uh, resolves that particular situation in that given location given you know vicinity it, it alerts people to uh, to go into safe locations and you know security in the home threat assessment so let's say uh, motion sensor lights uh, have come into uh, you know existence uh, so it doesn't you know you need not uh, switch it on and switch it off when motion is detected you know it will be capturing that uh, uh, the, the light will be on the camera will be on and so far then uh, border security it has it has you know border security nations have started building uh, automated missiles then you know it has come up with the wonderful solutions that are powered by uh, artificial intelligence to monitor the borders right and that is not all when it comes to pandemic when it comes to oil and uh, gas threats everything we are implementing uh, you know implementing the technologies with we which are empowered by artificial intelligence and machine learning Lie detector is the simplest example, but that is not uh, that is not how it functions uh, as we see it in the movies. Only a few movies have shown the exact purpose of lie detector, but uh, either ways, these are some of the real time examples which we can find for industry 4.0 based applications powered by machine learning and artificial intelligence, and that are in real life practice. How it can be automated? There are four ways of doing it. It is based on logic. You know how something works. That is called as logic. So let's say, you know, we are in this classroom and someone is asking you a question. Who should be the one, uh, you know, who should answer that question? Then, uh, you know, there, if, it, if this is going to be an open discussion, who is going to answer that question? Right. So that is based on some logic. Now, Past knowledge. Let us say, you know, I have uh, a history uh, of panic attacks. Let's say, you know, for uh, just before any class, every class I go in, even, you know, even before this class, I, I had a small panic attack. You know, that happens. This That is uh, one, you know, healthy element uh, because if I'm going in, uh, you know, with the confidence that no one is going to question me, uh, if, you know, everyone is just going to listen, then I'll not do well in that uh, classroom. 
right so this you know past knowledge is something which will you know tell you where to be more careful right there are roads right you know on on, on this road to somewhere you might have seen that uh, you know this is an accident prone zone why why, why you know from how they are uh, you know uh, deeming something as a as an accident prone zone it is an accident prone zone because multiple accidents have happened at that particular spot that is some past knowledge and what what do you mean by uh, you know anti logic let's say you know i'm driving a self driving car a smart car it is going at a speed of uh, let's say you know 60 kilometers per hour and uh, there is you know some some uh, passer by who immediately cross the uh, road without seeing my car what my car is supposed to do my car the lo the logic built on the self driving car is that it has to be careful it has to be attentive to what is happening in its surrounding in a 360 degree right the front it monitors the side it monitors how distant is it far from the uh, you know railings how far is it from the car you know that is traveling uh, in parallel with that on the other lane how far is it from the you know the middle and how far is it in the back right and it is also supposed to monitor you know when a passer by crosses the road but let us say we are uh, you know we are blinded by a truck in the uh, in, 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 in the front of my car in front of my car now what happens there the, the truck is going to maintain a particular speed and you know i am going to maintain a particular speed and you know we we both are going to travel at a, at a safe distance but if i am traveling at you know 80 kilometers per hour i may not be able or the self driving car algorithm might not might not be in a position to stop stop the car and protect me as it is supposed to do without hitting the truck so that is where anti logic ai comes in so anti logic is responsible for ad hoc solutions so it 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 senses that you know there is a truck going and what is the speed of that truck that is very important you may be blinded but the truck uh, you know the, the truck driver has a better visibility over the surroundings right and that is when this anti logic comes in and reactive it is even more specific so anti logic applies to this situation and reactive ai is when the truck before you you know uh, takes a hard break and you know you, your car knows that it cannot stop itself without it hitting the truck and what happens the next thing it should do whether it should dodge itself so that it protects the uh, the passers you know the passengers inside that car that is called as reactive ai so based on all these terminologies industry 4.0 i'm sorry for the you know uh, the spelling mistakes knowledge is spelled wrong and industry is spelled wrong but uh, it happens i'm sorry for that yeah if it was if if i was uh, you know using uh, an ai powered tool this would not have happened i'm still using grammarly but i you know i wonder where i missed anyways what are the benefits of industry 4.0 and i have rightly stated no one can deny the utmost importance of ai in industry 4.0 it it enables us to you know uh, uh, acquire better flexibility in terms of producing in terms of uh, manufacturing it increases the productivity so you know i have 10 people to do a job i have one one machine to do a job if i have three machines it does the, it does the work of 30 people better efficiency and better quality and the most important thing is reduced time to market right that is that is what it is more most important right we are we are living in a highly populous country and we, everyone wants a product everyone wants something and they want it immediately and that is where we reduce the time to market with the help of industry 4.0 and having said that we have come to the end of this session where 
I would like to brief you about the Internet of Things, where you know uh, there are a lot of uh, processes associated with manufacturing, uh, the internal you know machine to machine interactions, uh, what happens when a product is built, how it is packed, how it is stored, you know in the warehouse and so on, and how these processes can be automated with the help of Internet of Things. And uh, its its history states back to uh, dates back to 1999, and it quickly gained popularity because it 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 enabled the people to share data and information much faster than the conventional modes of communication. We were writing letters. We stopped writing letters and we started sharing emails. Right. Then, you know, for email, we had to go to a browsing center or, you know, the, the college or school laboratory. Then we st you know, started using laptops. Laptops were too uh, heavy and, uh, you know, you cannot carry it everywhere. You did not get uh, accessibility to power. It is limited by the power uh, stored inside. And uh, now our mobile phones are doing it. So when you connect multiple devices like this, a mobile phone, a smart vehicle, then you know you have automated gates, you have automated, you have smart televisions, you have smart uh, uh, appliances, electrical appliances, all these things combined together will give you an environment called an internet of everything. And we are living in an era where everything is powered by internet, everything is monitored by internet, and you know wherever we go we use internet even in the toilets right so this is all about industry 4.0 revolution and there are a few more advanced uh, topics which i would like to discuss about we are at the edge of uh, you know we are, we are at the verge of uh, entering into industry 5.0 uh, which is even more powerful and hope to see you on another uh, session on industry 5.0 and we are not using robots anymore rather we are we we have uh, we are getting more accustomed to a concept called cobot so it is it is a term called collaborative robots where the robots have started traveling with us right like just like you know siri just like uh, alexa so they have you know they, they they have started communicating with us right but there, there, there is going to be a stage where we'll, we'll be completely reliant on them. Uh, I do not know how many of you have seen this. Uh, okay, I forgot the movie name. But anyways, we will be, you know, re reaching a stage where we become completely dependent on machines. And let us not hope that, you know, that is not going to happen in immediate future. And... That would be all from my side. I'm open to question and answers. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and have a discussion with me. If there aren't any questions, we will wind up this session. Thank you for your time, everyone. And have a nice weekend. So Manjit, I believe uh, all our, our I'm just, yes, sir. I'm just uh...